Gregory, you were saying about how this conversation we, we were just having before we started recording about understand or learning the market's wants versus only thinking about what we know they need, how that affected your framing of an up upcoming blog post title. Yeah, I, it's something, as I was saying, it's something, this idea of the distinction between what the market, the audience wants versus what we need. I've been hearing for about six months and it's registered in terms of logic, but it just this morning, a moment ago, it hit me in a different way, which is uh, because I just wrote a new article and posted it yesterday and was kind of playing with the titles. I just dropped into, well, what do people think they want? And, exactly. and, right. and when I thought about that, I thought, oh, uh, like, for example, with the article that I wrote, I thought, the question that popped up that had not occurred to me yesterday was what what happens when you or if you're a coach or therapist what happens if you or someone you serve is uh feeling resistant to change like that's something that i think an audience person will go oh like yeah i want to i want to know that i i want to know what what do i do when I'm feeling resistant to change, yeah, and then what I have to offer is this other take on, uh, you know, on exactly. on a, solu a solution yeah. to that. But so I really realized that really taking into it's in a way it's like love languages, you know, it's 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 really saying okay, you know, what's the language that yes. my audience is speaking, so that I can really meet which is what we all do as coaches or consultants is, yes. I believe, is we're constantly looking at how do I meet my audience where my audience is so that I, so that I can support them. And, and then there's that collaborative synergistic thing that happens where spirit or insight or wisdom is moving inside of them. It's moving inside of us. And then together something happens where there's a, a dance or a shift into new insights and possibilities. Um, but, it, but it largely, at least from my perspective, is predicated on, am I able to meet the person I'm sitting with where they are? And, yes. this, and this framing of, of what, you've, what, what I've been hearing, but I just got on another level, it, it is really helpful. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. I, I love that you brought in the love language and uh, it's like, yeah, for those who don't know the love languages um, was also very deeply impacting for me years ago um, and, and you know it's about relationships and how it's not necessarily only romantic relationship this works for friends too and and uh, any relationship with other human beings it's like understanding uh they are for example much more sensitive to words of affirmation or uh, this other person is much more sensitive to gifts, gifting, or this other person is much more sensitive to acts of service or things like that. It's like different people. And this other person doesn't care about gifts at all. <laughs> they couldn't care less, uh, but they really are sensitive to, to touch. So giving hugs and things like that, it's a big deal for them. So it's like different people have different receptors, right? And same thing, our audience may have a different receptor for our work, uh, you know, compared to, what we think, you know, we, we're coming together. We're coming here with a with a square with a square connector point, but they have a circle receptor, and so oh, let's soften our square to a circle receptor, and that connects perfectly with what they what they want. So uh, I, I love that you are thinking about that. And well, what, what about blog post titles? Yes, it's like I know I, I've written about this. I think they need this. Now, how can I frame the title and the first paragraph or two to towards, ah, this is something that I understand at this time, this is something that's going to really interest them. This is what they want. And of course, titles, we, we, we want to be sure that the blog or the video or the product delivers on the promise. Uh, it delivers them what they want, but it also gives them more importantly, what we think they need. So yeah, thanks, Gregory. And Bird, what do you want? <laughs> so we also, zoom filter. you're what? laughing but i just this is sorry gregory just a second i just want to say it's also animals 
Animals too. Yes. Thank all you. Humans. Right on. Like, it's an animal communicator. Perfect. Perfect. It, yeah. And they tell you. Yeah. I, I was just approaching. I have two horses, a male and a female. And my, my boy just wasn't. I taught a class and he told somebody else who talked to him an issue he had with me. And I was like, damn, I didn't know that. I've had him for 20 years. That's and I'm like, okay, dude, I'm sorry. And now, I mean, we were, we were fine. We have a, a good relationship, but yeah, that piece, man, I just wasn't hearing it. So, so that's right. Yeah, it's great. Gonna, really good. Gonna, yes. Yeah. Individuals in our lives, animals, um, that helps us to, to see, well, that applies to marketing. <laughs> so thank you. It, it reminds me also, um, and I think there's a name for this in marketing. I, I don't remember what the name is, um, but I remember a few years ago being being intrigued, discovering that Apple, for example, when they take advertisements for the exact same product, but it's in a magazine that's directed for college students, you know, and I've, I'm going to make something up, but for example, an iPhone, the, a third of the copy might be about the music that, that, that can be played through the iPhone. And then, because they're speaking to the need of who's, who's yes. in college. They're and, speaking to the and wants. Really, yes. Yeah, it's speaking to the, to the, to the wants. It's the exact same product. Yeah. But then same play, product. Play, That's placed, right. placed in Field and Stream magazine, yes. it's going to talk about, you know, Something else. fishing That's exactly apps right. or, or whatever the thing I, is. I love it. Our modality, our, our framework, our, pro, our, our process that we do with clients and customers, the product that we provide can be framed in many to serve many different wants. And so it's like the audience we're talking to, what do we understand about the wants? Um, thank you. And I want to bring forth a question here from Julie about balancing what would delight me to create and bring to market versus, so balancing what we would delight me to create and bring to market versus what the market may be asking for or telling me what they most want. Um, and Julie, feel free if you wanna unmute and say anything else about that. Um, but essentially, yes, hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, so essentially, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take it from this point of view. Um, the larger and warmer our audience is, the more luxury and leeway we have to just create what we, what we want, what, what we want, what we believe they need, but we, what delights us. Um, so for example, it's delightful for me to have Mr. Bird, Mrs. Bird, they uh, here with me. <laughs> gender neutral bird. Um, uh, and my audience, I think, is probably warm enough where they don't mind me having a silly bird here. Um, but if I were, you know, if I were talking to a cool audience, um, you know, someone else's audience, I might not do something silly like this, or maybe that that is a good thing to do. I don't know. Um, so, so, so Julie, I think in your case, gratefully, you have quite a warm audience because that you've developed over the years. And you have more leeway to, to create what you want, what delights you, because in other words, um, you don't need to and need. Uh, now, now we're totally using the words in, in very confusing ways. You can, to, you can create what you delight, um, but somebody who is just starting, let's start from there. Someone who's starting, who doesn't have a, a large enough warm audience yet, especially in those cases, or if even if you do have an audience, but you need to make sales in the next quarter, either situation, whether you don't have an audience and need to get started or whether you do have an audience and need to make sales, either, one, either way, we have to remember that our income is our audience's spending. Our ability to do the work, which is doing things to transform or impact positively other people is all dependent our, on, on our audience's decisions. So if we need the audience <laughs> to decide yes, or to give us, you know, to say yes to our service or to our program, the more, the more there is an incentive for us to do that, the more we need to say, well, what do you want then? Well, it's kind of like if you, you know, going to the movie and your your friend says oh i don't like that movie 
And if you don't really need your friend to go with you, ah, no worries, I'm going to go by myself. <laughs> okay? But if you want to hang out with your friend, then you need to listen to your friend's movie you know, interests as well to say, well, I don't like that, that genre. Can we look at this other genre that pleases both of us? Sure. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a good movie. Let's go there. So the same thing. It's like, <laughs> how much do we want or need? <laughs> Sorry for the, the, the language. There. How much do we want or need our audience to come along with us? The larger our warm audiences, the, the more they're willing to come along just because they like who we are. And in, in other words, actually, the more we understand, the, the larger the warm audience we have, the more we probably understand them. Because over the years, we've done enough to build up the warmth, which means we've done enough interactions and engagements. But Julie, can you want to say anything else about that or any other? Um, yeah, I've, I've been uh, pondering this as, I, as the question was percolating um, through the discussions. And I realized a principle I used to use years ago about mutual, mutual delight mm -hmm. and uh, that, that something, some experience that I was creating would delight me and delight my audience. It was mutually beneficial, mutually delight, delightful. It felt good for all of us, just like, just like you were saying about the movie. Um, and the other thing that I thought about or that I was, I'm going to write about later was talking about looking at what my resistance is about. <laughs> when, I, when I think, oh, that's a great suggestion. Yeah, that's great. And all the time I'm saying that's great, I'm thinking that's like the bottom of my list of what I want to create. Really interesting. And, um, yes, I'm so just, glad you brought this up. Yeah, so I'm looking at the, the resistance uh, that I have and uh, making friends with the resistance and seeing what's underneath it. So kind of going through my own process will be interesting and fun. Really grateful you brought this up because we all will receive in the process of market research or just engaging with our audience, we're all, we are going to receive suggestions that we're like, yeah, I'm not really interested in doing that right now. Okay, it all comes up, but 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 I want to I want to uh, invite you to to well, let's take a data driven approach. Are you receiving that same suggestion from just one person, or from multiple of your ideal clients? Because if you start, you're hearing that, like same thing back to the movie thing. If you're hearing five of your friends that you have got to go see that movie, but you're like, I don't typically like this genre. No, no, you have to go see it. You have to go see it. Then you're like, well, okay, I have some resistance towards that genre or towards that idea, towards that movie, maybe towards that filmmaker, or whatever, or, or actors. But they, they, they're, they're asking me, they're encouraging me to do it. Let's do it. And then you go and you find out, oh, that was actually really <laughs> surprisingly good. And <laughs> now I can invite a bunch of my other friends to, you know, to, to go see it or to talk about it, you know, because now, so, so, um, it, it, it's, a, it's about whether or not it's an isolated suggestion. And also, um, if it is getting suggested by multiple people, but you're still resistant on it, I would then invite you to dive deeper into what's behind that suggestion, what's underneath mm -hmm. it. What is their, what's really their motivation and what's really their concern or their um, frustration or their, 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 or their passion? What's really the passion underneath it? Because maybe they're saying it this way, the suggestion this way, but the passion is connected to yours. And you're like, oh, I understand. You, you think you want that. Uh, I was offering this. So let me just kind of phrase it a little differently. I'm still, still going to be delivering the same thing. It's just going to be, you know, it's, it's still, still going to meet your underlying passion or underlying concern. Yeah. And Heidi, please go ahead. Yeah, I'd love to also offer my reflection. Um, it's interesting as you were going through the like the some of the potential things we could do for the market research and just to be aware of like my brain's reaction like oh no that doesn't sound so good and just I've been in in business long enough to notice that there are certain things that I'm comfortable doing and where I'm at is partly the result of those actions and so in order for me to change where I'm at, it's like, I need to get out of my comfort zone. And so paying attention to where that resistance is popping up, it might be a sign It's like, okay, like spend some time here. There might, I mean, if I've never done it before, like the results are probably going to be positive. Mm, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, so it is a professional development opportunity. 
and a personal growth opportunity for us, right? And so I appreciate that. And um, you, you never know until you try. And if you try it and the audience finds it beneficial, you'll probably be motivated to try it again. Um, or if the audience doesn't find it beneficial, they might give you suggestions and say, well, why don't we try, why don't you provide this next time? This might be something that, you know, so thank you so much all for, for this conversation. And um, anyone who is, uh, you know, has any reflections or questions, do feel free to comment below. Thank you, Julia Thee, also for writing about how it's about removing judgment. It's about removing judgment. Magical things happen when I drop my agenda and the space is created so that um, they can be exposed to a few little new ideas that feels expensive. Yes, so just be willing to try, be willing to experiment, even with something that we, we didn't think about doing before. So.